Good morning, everybody. Thank you uh, for being paid. Well, good afternoon. <laughs> it is uh, definitely afternoon here in Nashville. Um, just I see that we have a couple of people joining me. So I'm just going to give it a couple of more minutes uh, for more people to hop on. But if you are joining with me right now, then more than likely you are here because of the Common Black College application worldwide college fair that we are having on today. I am so very excited for you all to join me. And um, I'm just so thankful here as an admissions recruiter at Tennessee State University that you all have taken an interest in our amazing institution. Um, I am here to answer any questions you guys may have uh, while we are going through this. Um, I will be watching the comments to see if we have any questions. Um, in the meantime, I will go over a lot of the things about the university so that you all can learn a little more about TSU and um, see our beautiful campus, hear about our programs and opportunities that we have here at the university. Um, and then afterwards, if you guys have any questions, if they weren't answered in my presentation, then I would be more than happy to um, answer Answer those questions for you. So if you could, please, if you are watching this, go ahead and drop me some comments. Drop me some comments uh, into the chat so that I know that you're here. Um, I am seeing someone saying that I am watching your live and orientation. So that means I have a new class of 2024 um, Tiger joining us today. So thank you so much for being here um, and uh, helping me support uh, getting more future Tigers for our next class to come in. So I hope you are enjoying orientation and I hope that you are getting everything you need out of that. Um, if you are, Mackenzie, if you know me, if you've seen any of my lives before, then you know how to get in touch with me if you have any questions after orientation. So the first thing I'm going to do um, for everyone is I'm going to go ahead and show a quick video, which is going to be a tour of our campus. If you've never had the opportunity to visit our illustrious campus here located in Nashville, Tennessee, then I will go ahead and drop a um, tour of the campus so you can see uh, the campus for yourself. And then if you have any questions after that, I will be more than happy to answer those for you. So let's see.
All right, that was a tour from our amazing Tiger Tour Guides. I hope for those of you who have never visited our campus, I hope you were able to see how beautiful our 500 acre uh, main campus is. As you can see um, for an HBCU, we do have a very large uh, main campus, uh, one of the largest among the HBCUs in the country. Um, the reason why I say the main campus is because we actually do have two campuses. Uh, we have our our, um, our main campus, which is the one that you just saw in the video. And then we also have our Avon Williams downtown uh, campus complex. And that's gonna house departments such as our graduate school. Um, also, it's gonna house our College of Business and some of our other colleges. Um, so if you are like say a business major, then you will have that to look forward to that you would also have classes in the heart of downtown Nashville located to next to companies such as HCA, which is Hospital Corporations of America. Um, Amazon is building a headquarters right next door to our campus, which is something we're really excited about. And also Bridgestone. So we have multiple uh, different big organizations that are downtown near our downtown campus that um, are always constantly recruiting students for our school. So I'm just looking at the comments uh, really quickly before I move on. So I'm seeing someone say something about the sound. Did you not, if you could drop in the comments, did you not hear the sound of the video? Or if you cannot hear me? I'm also showing a comment from a current student. Um, Trinity, if you are having issues with your financial aid, uh, then I would say reach out to the financial aid department. If you have not been able to get in touch with the financial aid department, I have sent my email um, address in the comments. So just shoot me an email um, with all of your information in it, your T number and everything and what problems you're having. And I'll make sure to get that over to the financial aid department for you. Okay, so Jeffrey, you said we couldn't hear the video. Okay, so um, you you all were not able to hear the video. That I, I could hear it on my end, so I thought it was playing. So I do apologize for that. I don't know why it wasn't able to hear on your end, but I will show the video again. We are going to be on here live for a little while. Um, so this fair is, um, you know, a couple of hours. So um, I will show the video again in a moment. So we'll give other people a chance after they visited other schools to come on. And once they come on, I will show the video again and hopefully we can get that sound taken care of for you. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is um, what I'm going to talk a little bit about the issue um, of some of the programs and a lot of the things that we have going on here. Uh, for those of you all who have never uh, came to TSU, seen the campus or know anything about it. So I will go ahead and let me share my screen again. And like I said, I am looking at, I'm watching the comments. So if you all have any questions while I'm going through my presentation, then please make sure to drop your uh, questions into the comments and I'll be sure to answer those questions for you. All right, so I see I have one question. So far, GRE requirements for grad program, um, have they changed? I'm assuming that's what you're asking me, have the graduate requirements changed? I am not sure if uh, the graduate program, I mean, the requirements have changed for all the programs. I do know that um, they were waiving uh, the fee, they were waiving the test scores for the doctorate in educational leadership. That is one thing that I know that has changed. Um, they were also, I think, waiving some application fees for that program. So I think it's going to be by a case by, it's going to be case by case as far as what the requirements are 
for the grad programs. If you have questions about the graduate program, because I do work in undergraduate admissions, but if you do have questions about our graduate school, then you could just um, go to their website and um, on TSU, if you go to tnstate.edu and type in graduate um, admissions, then it will take you to their web page and it will show you um, all of the contacts for the different programs. So you just would select the program that you're interested in to find out about the requirements. And I hope that answered your question. Um, like I said, I'll be watching the comments. So if you guys have any questions throughout this, just let me know. Um, so a little bit about the history of TSU for those of you all who are unfamiliar. Um, Tennessee State University was founded here in Nashville, uh, Tennessee as a land grant institution in 1912. Uh, we did have our name changed to Tennessee State University in 1968. Uh, we are accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, which we call SACS. Uh, that is who we receive our accreditation through. And our president of our university is the illustrious Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover. So just these are just some of our notable alumni. We have so many uh, notable alumni and successful people that have graduated from Tennessee State uh, University. But these are just a few of our um, alumni that we have here. As you can see, of course, um, the queen, Miss Oprah Winfrey, is an alumni of Tennessee State University. We also have there. Um, donning her gold medals is a uh, Wilma Rudolph who was an Olympic a medalist who gold medalist who attended Tennessee State University we have so much at the school that is done uh, that is in her honor we have um, Rudolph Hall which is a women's dorm and we have a statue outside of our Gentry Center that is dedicated to her um, also we have um, as you see there we have Dominique Rogers Cromarty who is a football player um, in the um, NFL. And we also have there, we have Robert Covington, who is um, a basketball player in the NBA. All of these great notable alumni did attend Tennessee State University. So location, so Nash, uh, Tennessee State University is located in Nashville, Tennessee, which is affectionately known as Music City. Um, as I stated earlier, we do have a 500 acre main campus. Yes, we have a very large main campus um, and that is about 10 minutes from downtown Nashville. But as I already stated, we also have the Avon Williams downtown campus, which is located in the heart of downtown Nashville, as you see here. So this is a picture of our downtown Nashville. And yes, our campus is located right in the heart of downtown Nashville um, with access to companies such as Amazon, Bridgestone, and HCA, which do um, recruit students for uh, work at their corporations. So this is just a few facts about TSU. Uh, we are we do have an R2 Carnegie classification, which uh, means we are a very high research university. We do partake in a lot of research at our university, and we have which has given us that R2 classification, which is a very high classification. We have one of the highest in the state. Um, also, 90% 96 percent of our faculty holds the highest degree in their field. So that means uh, 96 percent of your professors are going to be at the doctoral level and will hold those degrees and have experience in the field that they are teaching you. Um, we have over 8,000 students that attend our university. Um, however, our class size is 16 to 1. And I know that might be shocking that we have a smaller class size, but that is because we we want you to have a more personable relationship with your professors. We want to ensure that our class sizes aren't too large so that you will have access to your professors um, and able to have that relationship with them to give you all the things that you need to be successful in those classes. Um, we also have a computer lab that is located in every academic building on campus. So if you do come to school and you do not have a computer, you don't have to worry about that. We do have those computer labs located in every academic building, as well as other buildings as well. We have computer labs in the library, in some of the dorms. So you will never have to worry about not having access to a computer or a printer or Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is located throughout the whole campus as well as printers to be able to print your documents. 
Also, 75% of students that complete internships are offered full-time positions by that company. So that's amazing. So that means 75% of our students that actually work hard, obtain an internship, are going to actually get jobs with those companies upon graduation. Um, not only am I an admissions recruiter, I'm also an adjunct professor in the College of Business. And I will say this, also, as a two-time graduate of the College of Business, those students over in the College of Business are getting these big-time internships with these companies. Uh, they are getting recruited, and these are paid internships. Um, I know for um, the supply chain management concentration, all of those internships are paid. So you're going to not only get experience, but you're going to be paid as well. They're going to pay for your travel and for your stay when you, if you're um, internship happens to be out of town. And those companies are so impressed with our students that they are offering them full-time jobs because that's what we're coming to school for. We're coming to school. That's, that's what you're going to get a degree for. You want to be able to leave and have a good place to work. So that's what we want to make sure that our students are taking full advantage of those internships and are obtaining those jobs with those companies. Um, also, we do have shuttle services that go between the main campus and downtown campus. So if you do have classes, let's say you are a business major and you have classes that are located in the downtown campus, we do have shuttle services that run all day between the main campus and the downtown campus to ensure you can get to class. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I have classes downtown, but I don't have a car. Uh, we do have those uh, services available for you. Um, also, so another one of the big perks for our students is we don't have any, we do not have classes on Fridays. Yes, I said it, no classes on Fridays. Um, all of our schedules are your classes, the majority of your classes are going to either be a Monday, Wednesday class or a Tuesday, Thursday class or a Monday, if you take night classes, then it'll either be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night class. Um, we don't schedule any classes on Friday except for your first semester. Your first semester, you are required to take a student orientation class. It's kind of like a, an orientation class. It's just, it's like a, it's called university. Um, and it's a class that, you know, all freshmen are required to take. That class is offered on Fridays, but after that, your, your schedule will be either uh, Monday through Thursday. We do offer some weekend classes. You'll see some classes that'll be like Friday night um, and all day Saturday or a Saturday class. But for the majority of our main classes, all of those classes are going to be Monday through Thursday. So if you are coming to TSU from out of town, um, you will, uh, you don't have to worry about having time to travel back and forth home um, because we do have those, um, that opportunity for you to have Fridays off so you can travel back home to see your family. And also another big question that I get is, can freshmen have cars on campus? Yes. We do allow freshmen to bring your cars to campus, no problem. Um, all you have to do is when you get here, make sure you bring all of your registration and everything and register your car with the university. Uh, we do give um, parking passes, uh, which is part of your tuition. So when you arrive, you'll get a parking sticker for your car and you'll be able to park on campus. Um, and as I'm going through this, if anybody, like I said, if anybody has any questions, just drop your questions into the chat and I will answer them. I am getting to financial aid, um, costs and housing and all of those things. So, um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. So as far as athletics go at Tennessee State University, we are um, an NCAA Division I school. Uh, we are in the Ohio Valley Conference. Uh, the men's sports that we have on campus is going to be basketball, football, golf, tennis, track and field. And for the women's sports, we have basketball, softball, tennis, golf, volleyball, track and field. Um, also, we do have cheerleading and we have um, our dance teams. So with the dance teams, it's gonna be, uh, we have the uh, sophisticated ladies which dance with the aristocratic bands. And we have the Tiger Gems that dance during uh, basketball season. Um, I don't know about the dance team, but I do know that our cheerleading team does offer um, scholarships. So that is, so if you are a cheerleader and you are looking to cheer 
on the collegiate level, then you can reach out to our cheerleading department and they can let you know the opportunities we have for um, cheerleading scholarships. Now, this is just, I have some pictures here of some of the facilities that are located on campus. So we're going to start up in the left-hand corner. As you see, that is our indoor practice facility. That is our bubble where our football team practice. So yes, they do have a nice big practice facility that they uh, practice in just for them. Um, also located there is Keene Hall. Keene Hall is going to be our gym that is located in our Floyd Payne Campus Center. Um, that is our smaller gym. Um, we don't play any games there, but that is where our volley, our women's volleyball team do have their matches. And I will say this, I because I do work in the student center, those volleyball games are lit. Like I hear when I'm leaving <laughs> in the afternoon, going home, I do always, every Anytime they're having a volleyball game, I stop by because they have a DJ. They're in there. I mean, they have a good time at those uh, girls' volleyball games. So if you do decide to come to TSU, please make sure you're, you're supporting our, our girls' volleyball because they do look like they have some fun um, games. Also located there is our William uh, Jasper Hill Stadium, which we affectionately call the Hole. That is our football stadium that is located on campus. So we do play some of our games there. Uh, well, the majority of our games there on um, through the year, that is where our football team plays. That is also where we have our spring uh, commencement ceremony. Located next to that, I have our Gentry Center Complex. Our Gentry Center Complex is going to be where our men's and women's basketball team play. Um, as you can see, that is a huge facility. Um, and we not only have our basketball games there, but whenever we have any type of large events on campus, concerts, um, anything like that, uh, they're always held in the Gentry Center. Um, our fall, December graduation is held there. Also located in the Gentry Center is going to be our workout facility for our students, for our student athletes. Um, we also have a workout facility or um, a wellness center for um, our students. So we do have, and it is new, it's newer. Um, so we do have a state of the art workout facility there for the students. So you don't have to worry about finding a gym when you get to Nashville. We do have one located on campus for you. There are also classrooms located in this building for our students that do have like sports, um, like any type of class within like sports medicine. I think our dance classes and things like that are held in the Gentry Center. There's an indoor pool in this building. Um, and there's just, it, it's just a great complex with a lot of different things. Also our ticket office is located there. So if you would like to purchase any tickets for any football games or events, all of that can be purchased there at our Gentry Center complex. Um, I think one of the biggest thing for our students is for homecoming, because you know, TSU, we do have one the best homecoming around. I'm gonna say it, um, love our homecoming. Um, and every year for our freshmen, we do have a large concert that we put on every year for our, for our um, undergraduates. Um, in the Gentry Center. It's usually whoever's hot at the time. I know last year we had um, Lil Baby and uh, G Herbo and some other people that were here and it was just, um, it was it was a big concert. It was it was a lot of fun. I know the last time I, I think I went, we had actually had Future at the concert. So those are always a good time. Um, and last but not least, as you see here, Nissan Stadium. So I know you're wondering, is that a picture of a TSU football game? <laughs> no, that is not a TSU football game, but that is Nissan Stadium. That is the home of the Tennessee Titans. And TSU is fortunate enough to be the only HBC in the uh, HBCU in the country that hosts uh, some of our football games at an NFL stadium. So yes, we do hold some of our games a year at the Tennessee Titans Stadium. We have a full um, locker room and everything at that stadium for our student athletes. Um, it is so much fun when we get to go down there for games. Most of the games are going to be your, um, it's gonna be like our classic, our John Mayer classic we have every year. Um, homecoming, we have our homecoming down there. It's so much fun. Um, you know, we have a huge parking lot for Tennessee Titans uh, Stadium. So the whole entire parking lot is full of tailgaters, 
oh my God, it's, it, it's definitely an experience. Um, also for the parents and the alumni, if you want to get fancy and rent out some of the suites, you know, we have that available to be able to rent out the suites for the uh, football games, order the food and drinks and everything. And just, have, I mean, it's an amazing time. I just, I love that we have the opportunity and that our student athletes have the opportunity to be able to play on that NFL field and also give our students an opportunity to be able to attend games at that facility as well. So moving right along, um, our, so now it's time to talk about the baddest band in the land, number one HBCU band in the country. Argue me, I will say it again. We do have the best band, um, the Aristocrata Bands. Um, so if you are interested in being a part of this illustrious, amazing band, um, they are this year holding auditions virtually. I don't know what the audition um, process is going to be for 2021, but as of for 2020, they have, they held the um, auditions virtually. Um, but if you are interested in being a part of the um, best band in the country, Aristocratic Bands. I have listed the web address there. That's going to be www.aristocratofbands.com. On that website, you can get all of the information about the band. You can um, also get information about uh, who to contact for scholarships. The application is also located there because you do have to apply uh, to be a part of the band and audition. They also have a summer camp. They, they also have summer camps there. So if you are in high school, let's say you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, you're not a senior yet, and you do want to attend a future um, summer camp with the band, then you can also get that information from the website as well. Also, young ladies, if you are interested in auditioning for the Sophisticated Ladies, which is the dance um, team for the band, then that information is also located on the website as well. Sorry, this button was bothering me. All right, so moving on, student organizations. So on, at Tennessee State University, we have a very involved campus. We have um, over a hundred plus student organizations on campus. And I know you're like, gosh, what, what could you possibly have uh, that many organizations for? Well, we have that many organizations because we have organizations that have interest in everything. Um, we have organizations for different interest groups. We have um, organizations for the different departments. So I will always encourage students that whatever your major is or whatever college College you're in, um, if it's education, business, or whatever, then to make sure that you are a member of the organizations for that college or department, because those are the students that's going to get the first hand pick of the scholarships, the internships. They're going to be the first ones to know everything that's going on that's going to help them be successful. So I always encourage students to please try to, when you get here, find out what organizations are not just the Greek organizations, but the organizations that are in your college um, and become a part of that. We also have like honor societies and um, they also have uh, fraternities for the different colleges as well. So there is a business fraternity. Um, so those are things that are also gonna be options for you as well. Also being able to get involved, we do also have Student Government Association, and that is something that you can become involved with um, even as soon as a freshman, because we do have our, uh, our freshman class leaders, like our freshman class president, vice president, our Miss Freshman, Mr. Freshman. So we do have those opportunities for you in your first year. Uh, those are things you'll learn about once you get here. Um, pep club, resident hall councils, so many. Um, as you can also see, we do have the Divine Nine Greek Letter Organizations on campus. Um, all of our uh, Greek letter organizations are very active on campus, very involved. And um, 
just once you get here, you just jump right in. Uh, so if you are interested in learning more about the student organizations and how you can join, then um, just as soon as you get here, make sure that you are asking questions about uh, the student organizations that are offered for freshmen, such as SGA, residence councils, et cetera. But also something that we do on campus, which is a day that our students look so forward to, and that is gonna be Courtyard Wednesday. So Courtyard Wednesday, Yes, that is the day. That is the day that everybody gets cute, put on their clothes and the shoes, and they come out <laughs> to the student center on Wednesday. And this has been going on forever. I was a freshman at TSU exactly 20 years ago. So we had Courtyard Wednesday uh, when I was a freshman at TSU in 2000. And so this is something that is still going on today. So they do Courtyard Wednesdays. And what it is, is, you know, sometimes they'll have a DJ out in the courtyard. Um, they'll have um, you know, uh, sometimes maybe food trucks will be out there. The organizations will set up tables and they'll pass out information about their organizations. Um, and they'll just all be out there in their paraphernalia so that you can meet them and get to know them and kind of see them firsthand in action. So we just love Courtyard Wednesdays on campus. So that is something to look forward to. If you actually want to get a visual of what Courtyard Wednesday looks like, then go to our website and go to our virtual tour. So if you look up our virtual tour on our website then you will be able to see what our um what our courtyard wednesday looks like because they do have a live video on there that you can select to see courtyard wednesday in action okay so residence hall so i know this is something that you all are uh, you know those this is some of the main questions i get what, what does the rooms look like okay so I don't have all of our residence halls uh, located here, but I did try to post the main ones for incoming freshmen. Um, so for incoming, we do have several uh, dormitories located on campus that you can have the option of staying in as a freshman, but these are going to be the main ones. So we have Wilson Hall located here. That is going to be our freshman girls dorm. Um, that dorm is going to be a roommate style dorm and it's gonna be community bath and showers. And um, there are common areas located on every floor. There's a common area located downstairs. They do have um, laundry facilities that are located in the dorm. And guess what? the laundry facilities are free. So you don't have to worry about lugging a whole lot of laundry home on the weekends for your mama to wash. I know mama real happy about that. You can wash your laundry on campus um, in the dorms for free. So we have all of that located. There is also Wi-Fi located in all of the dorms as well. Um, that so Wilson Hall that is going to be the freshman girls dorm um yes I stayed in Wilson my freshman year so I'm not just trying to get you to stay there I, I stayed there as well and I'll say this staying in a dorm at HBCU definitely builds character <laughs> not only that um this is where you're going to meet all of your friends I mean some of the friends that I met staying in Wilson um on the fifth floor um I am still friends with to this day, 20 years later. So um, that's why I always encourage students to stay in the freshman dorms because you're going to, that's where you're just gonna meet so many great people that are coming in just like you and you're gonna make lifelong friends. Um, so moving on uh, to Watson Hall. Watson Hall is gonna be our freshman boys dorm. That is also just like Wilson, it's going to be a, a roommate style dorm with community bath and showers. Oh, also for Wilson Hall, they do, as you can see from the bottom picture, they do have sinks and mirrors located in the rooms. So you will have your own sink and mirror in the room, although it's not bathrooms in the room. And um, so Watson Hall is the same. Watson Hall is our freshman boys dorm. Like I said, roommate style, community style bathrooms. Also, they have some. Uh, they have the same amenities as Wilson Hall as well. Um, and then to my far right is going to be Hale Hall. Hale Hall is actually our honors college dorm. Um, it is one of our more uh, recent, up to date dorms. Uh, it's going to be more privacy in that dorms because the the bathroom styles are different than the Wilson and Watson dorms. So Hale Hall is one of our more desirable dorms on 
campus, but it is, oh, it is also a co-ed dorm. So it is men and women are allowed to stay in Hill Hall, but you do have to be accepted into the Honors College in order to stay in that dorm. So if you are interested in staying in the Honors College dorm, then when you apply to the university, you will also have to apply to the Honors College as well, which they do have some GPA and test score requirements. Um, and there will be classes that you'll have to take, uh, but in order to apply for um, to stay in Hill Hall when you apply for housing. Um, we do have other uh, dorms on campus that are not mentioned here, such as Rudolph Hall, Boyd Hall. Um, we do have an off-campus apartment complex uh, that are for upperclassmen. And we have already started construction on our brand new residence dorms. Yes, I think they're gonna be a 700 bed, um, dorm I don't know if I'm right about that I just heard it the other day but they're going to be big nice amazing brand new dorms so they have already broke ground on that they are have already started construction on those brand new dorms and hopefully we'll see those dorms go up uh I think it's going to be about a year and a half or so um a little maybe a little over but we will see those dorms go up if you're starting next fall then you'll probably those dorms will be up by your your sophomore year those dorms will be completed so you guys have that uh to look forward to um coming into tsu that you can be some of the first to have access to our brand new dorms that'll be on campus um i did get um a comment that says do all the rooms have air conditioning yes we do have air conditioning and heat um in our rooms no uh there is uh, miss gray there is not a way to apply for the honors college through the common black college app but what you will do is is just go once you apply to the university um and we get your application process go to our website go to tnstate.edu i'll put that in the chat if you go to tnstate well autocorrect sorry tnstate.edu go to our search and type in honors college and then the information will come up of how you can apply to our um, uh, apply to the honors college from the website all right so we're going to move past our dorms and now we're going to go into our colleges and schools um, and into uh, some of our majors that we offer at the university. So when we say colleges and schools, so every university or college is broken into multiple colleges and schools. That means this is going to be the area where your um, the concentration or the bulk of your classes will be taken. This is a list of the different colleges and schools that we have here on campus. Um, before I get into that, I just saw a comment that says, how long does it take to receive your dorm assignment? So if you are applying for fall 2021, what's gonna happen is our dorm, um, our housing portal is gonna open up in the spring. And as soon as the housing portal opens up in the spring, then you will apply for housing. Um, so you will go in, you'll fill out the application, you'll pay a $100 deposit, and um, you will get, be given an option of the, your two top choices of your dorms. So you'll get to say your number one choice and your number two choice. Um, and then also, let's say that you have another fellow student that you're interested in, you're coming to TSU with your bestie, you want to be roommates, then what you would do is, both, well, first of all, both of you have to already be fully, well, have to be accepted um, into the university and have your, what we call a T number. So if you all have, both of you guys have your T number then you will put on both applications, okay, I want my bestie, we want to be roommates. And then um, there's a application period. And then after that application period, then they will uh, start, they will start giving out room assignments. So really, it just all depends on how soon you apply, because they start giving out room assignments. When they start giving them out, they give them out as they come in. So the, the ones that are going to have the first I guess dibs at the at the desired rooms are the students that have already completed your application. So my suggestion is to, if you are 
planning on applying to TSU, then as soon as that housing portal opens, you apply for housing. So that when they start sending out those room assignments, which would be like maybe a month or so later, a month, maybe two later, um, then you will be one of the first ones considered, uh, you'll be able to get your room assignments. So, so I guess the short answer is, it's probably about a couple months after housing um, opens up the date, or maybe it, it's, it's a couple months um, after you apply that they start giving out those assignments and they just continue to give them out until school starts as people apply. So I hope that answers your question. If not, drop something else in the chat for me. Okay, so um, colleges and schools, these are the different colleges and schools that we have located here at TSU. So we have um, our College of Agriculture, Business, Education, Engineering. We have our Graduate School, um, Health Sciences, Liberal Arts, Life and Physical Science, and Public Service. So these are the different colleges and schools that we offer and your, uh, whatever your desired major is will fall under one of these colleges. So I'm not going to read all this. Um, I, hopefully you guys can see it. I'm trying to look at my phone to see once it pops up, how it looks to you. Um, but these are, uh, I think I have a couple of slides of it, but I just wanted to kind of um, give you an overview of what the different majors are here at the university. So as you can see here, I know it's kind of small because I wanted to get everything on there, um, but all of this information for majors is located on the website. Um, this comes straight from TSU's website. So if you want to go back to the website and um, look all of this up, you can look these majors up, but this is just kind of an overview of the different majors and uh, concentrations. So what you're looking at is the the blue is going to be your major, and then the smaller little asterisks are going to be like your concentration. So, for example, um, business administration, which you see up at the top. So, what you would be studying is you would be studying business administration, that would be your major, and then your concentration would be one of those that are located underneath. So, when I was an undergrad, my major was business administration with a concentration in management. So, that's what my degree is in. Um, so, as you can see there, you would be um, business administration with a concentration in supply chain management or business information systems with a concentration in BIS industry, um, art, art design, so on and so forth. So these are just a list, as you can see, um, multiple majors and concentrations here. Um, if you look under agricultural sciences, you'll see that we have also agribusiness. So you don't just have to study in the college of business, you can do agribusiness in the college of business, I mean, in the college of agriculture. Um, also in agriculture, as you can see, another big question that I get a lot, uh, as you can see here, we have pre-veterinary medicine. So what you would major in is agricultural sciences, and then you would concentrate in um, pre-vet or pre-med. Um, so you have that option under agricultural sciences. Um, also, if you take a look here, we have dental hygiene. Now, uh, if you look next to the dental hygiene, it says AAS. And what that means is we actually have an associate's degree in dental hygiene. So yes, you can come to TSU and actually obtain an associate's degree um, in dental hygiene, which for our, T for our Tennessee students. So if you are located locally in Tennessee, then yes, you can use Tennessee Promise to um, get to apply to your um, associate's degree, that associate's you know, um, scholarship to apply for the dental hygiene and um, your associate's degree in dental hygiene. Also, another good thing is we're one of the few schools in the country, not HBC, but schools, period, that actually offers a bachelor's degree in dental hygiene as well. So how I like to break it down is you can come to TSU, get your associate's degree in dental hygiene. We have a full state of art, um, a brand new health sciences building that we are just completing. Um, and they have... Um, clinics and stuff for our dental hygiene students to actually practice. My dental hygienist that I go to, yes, every time I go to the dentist, she is a TSU graduate. I trust her and she is the bomb. I love her to death. 
also, we do have an amazing program in dental hygiene. You can get your associates in dental hygiene. You can start working because you'll have your associates, you'll have it. So you can start working. And while you're working, you can obtain your bachelor's in dental hygiene. So your last two years of school, you're already working, making money. You know, that's a, that's a good deal. So if you are interested in dental hygiene, please go to the website and check out our dental hygiene program. Um, you definitely will not be disappointed with that. I'm trying to see if there's anything else on this screen I want to highlight. Um, I am a huge fierce advocate for our college of business because like I said, I am a graduate twice of our college of business and I'm also a professor in the college of business. And um, one program I would love to highlight is our supply chain management. That is one of our top programs in the college of business. They have an amazing supply chain management student organization where those students are getting tons of internships and scholarships. Um, a lot of our colleges offer amazing scholarships. I know agriculture does, engineering does, um, because it's not just about the school scholarships. You know, you can obtain some really great scholarships from the actual departments. So, so remember that just because you don't come straight in with the scholarships does not mean that you cannot get the scholarships once you get there. You can come with no scholarships and obtain one your freshman year to carry on. Um, so here is a second list of the rest of our majors that we have. If you didn't see it on the previous screen, here are some more. Um, and what you'll see here is, and these are all of our undergraduate programs, by the way, these are not uh, featuring our graduate programs. These are all our undergraduate programs. So what you'll see here is our um, education, um, electrical engineering, English, um, foreign language as a minor, history, our human performance sciences, um, also our music, you know, we have an amazing music program here. A lot of students come to Tennessee State University to major in music and to be a part of our aristocratic bands, which I've mentioned several times because our band is that amazing. <laughs> so we have those different options for music. Um, also, we have um, our nursing program where you can obtain either your bachelor's of science in nursing or let's say that you're already an RN and you've already received your RN from another institution and you would like to obtain your BSN, then we do have a program where you can get your RN to BSN degree. So we do have that available. Um, also, as you see here, we have um, a pre-law track for our lawyers who are interested into going into law, um, professional studies, psychology, uh, we have an amazing program in social work. We have one of the top social work programs in the country. Um, I think we go all the way up to terminal degrees in social work, which means a uh, PhD. Um, also, I think in psychology as well, we have terminal degrees um, in psychology. So you can attend a TSU for multiple degrees um, in your program. I'm sorry, I'm doing so much talking again. Have me a little bit of water, thank you. Okay, so um, also as we see here, we have our speech communications in theater and our urban studies. Also what you'll see at the bottom here, we have um, some of our online programs. We do have some online uh, professional studies programs uh, that are geared in health admin, IT, organizational leadership, those degree programs are going to be the degree programs that are going to be completely online degree programs. So these are uh, this slide and our other slide is going to be all of the degrees that we offer at the university. Are there any previous majors? Or would a student have to? Okay, so Ms. Grace says, are there any pre-med specific majors or would a student just major in biology? It just all depends. I'll go back to the previous slide. Um, as you can see under agriculture, we do have, um, under the food and animal sciences, we do have a pre-med, we have a pre-vet and a pre-med track in agriculture, um, but we also do have um, for, bio, you would major in biology. So let's see if our biology is okay. 
here. Yes, yeah, so um, the majority of the students you're going to see that want to go to medical school are going to major in biology. Um, I will go ahead and skip to the next slide to be able to answer your question a little more thorough. Uh, as you can, I'll just go ahead and skip down to our last point here on here where it says Bachelor of Science, Doctor of Medicine. So we do have a BSMD program partnership with Meharry Medical College. So we do have students that if you qualify, um, if you do have the qualifications to be in that program at TSU, then this partnership with um, Meharry Medical College, which is um, our, which is an HBCU medical school, which is located, oh gosh, probably about five minutes, so it's almost walking distance, depending on how far you're, I've walked it before, um, but it is, it's across the street from Fisk University. Um, so right down the street from TSU, um, all of our HBCUs are located in the same area. Um, we do have a partnership with Meharry Medical College. And if you do get accepted into that program, then while you're taking classes at TSU, for your Bachelor of Science, um, you will be allowed to go ahead and start taking classes at Meharry. So it kind of, what that does is it gives you a jump start on medical school before you even graduate. And so you'll have that jump start. And then after what it is doing, it is preparing you for your transition from Tennessee State University straight into Meharry Medical College. So we do have that program available and that is something that you will have to apply for. So um, hopefully um, that answers your question. So yeah, we have uh, biology and then the pre-med in agriculture. Um, so uh, in some of our other additional programs that we have at TSU, we have Air Force ROTC. Um, if you are interested in getting in any other branches of ROTC, such as the Army, uh, we do have that at TSU, but we do a partnership with Vanderbilt. So you would actually have to um, sign up for that at Vanderbilt University, and um, that would be a partnership with TSU through their school. But for TSU, uh, the only branch of ROTC that we formally have is Air Force. Um, we do have that available and you can um, access that information on our website. Also, as you heard me speak about earlier with the dorms, we have our um, honors college. These are going to be the requirements to apply for our honors college. So if you have a 3.4 GPA, a 25 on the ACT or 1220 on the SAT, then you can um, apply for our honors college. And like I stated earlier, if you apply for our honors college, you can apply to stay um, in our honors dorm, which is Hill Hall. Um, we also have TSU at a distance, which is online education. I showed you guys some of the programs that we have available through our um, online, which was located on the previous slide. If you want more information, once again, about what other different online programs we offer, just go to tnstate.edu and type in TSU at a distance and those programs will populate for you. Um, we have certificate programs available um, at TSU as well. Like I stated, all located on the website. All right, so the main thing that everybody wants to know, I know y'all have sit here and listened to me carry on for <laughs> about an hour to find out what are the admission requirements for TSU. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty. We've gotten through all that other stuff. What are the requirements to attend TSU? So admission requirements for TSU, these are going to be our basic admission requirements for Tennessee State University. So first of all, in order to be accepted into the university, you will have to have a 2.5 GPA, not a 2.49, but a 2.5, and we do, that is it. It has to be a 2.5 GPA in order to be accepted. However, if you have a 3.2 weighted GPA, we are going to give you guaranteed admission to the university, yes. 
that's true. Your, I know you guys all out there have those 3.9s and 4.0s. So you're not even worried about a 2.5 because guess what? You all are going to be guaranteed admissions if you have at least a 3.2 weighted GPA. Um, that means we are going, we're going to, you know, we want your ACT and SAT scores. We want to see them, but we're not going to take that into consideration for admission. So if your GPA is a 3.2 um, weighted, then you get guaranteed admission to the university. Also, you will be able to apply for like scholarships and things like that. Um, so for our basic for um, scholarship purposes, you would need to have at least a 19 on the ACT, a 900 on the SAT. But for basic admission into the university, we only require a 16 on the ACT and a 760 on the SAT. Um, anything below a 2.5 GPA or below a 16 ACT, uh, ACT or 760 SAT, is going to you will have to um you will have to fill out an admissions appeal so what you would do is apply to the university and you will be denied um admission but you will be allowed to uh you will be allowed to submit an appeal so because we are um like I said, we want you to attend. If, the, if TSU is your dream and you fell a little short somewhere, we still want to make sure that dream comes true for you. So what we would ask for you to do is to file an admissions appeal. Let us know why you want to come to TSU, um, you know, send in those letters of recommendation, and we will work with you to try to get you into TSU. So just because you fall short of some of the requirements does not mean that all hope is lost. Okay, now for fall 2020, we have waived our test scores. We are, um, we are, uh, we have not yet decided if we, uh, you know, it has not been passed down about what the test score uh, guidelines are going to look like for fall 2021. Um, but as of right now, our guidelines are that we have waived the test scores for the fall of this year. Um, but we will keep you all posted on whether or not we will waive the test scores for next year. But still understand that if you have that 3.2 GPA, your test scores are not gonna matter. So as long as your GPA is over a weighted 3.2, then basically your test scores are still waived. Um, you must have one unit of US history. Um, and also you will have to submit your application, um, your application fee, your transcripts. Now you will have to submit your transcripts just to be tentatively admitted. But in order to be, uh, to, to be fully accepted in the university, um, you will have to also submit a final transcript upon graduation from the university. So your transcripts will have to be submitted twice. Um, but just to get tentatively admitted. So when you upload, when you guys apply to the Common Black College app, uh, you're going to um, submit, you're going to pay your application fee on there. So the application fee that you pay for the Common Black College app, we're going to accept that in the university. So you already know, you don't have to pay your application fee twice. So we're going to take that application fee, apply it to your TSU application. All of that information that you upload to CBCA, we're going to, we're going to just transfer that right on over to TSU. So that way we'll have your application, we'll have your application fee, the transcripts that you upload to CBCA, that's going to be the transcripts that we're going to look at. Um, also, your test scores that you upload to CBCA. So if you're applying through the Common Black College app, we're going to take all of that information from the information that you upload into that um, into their website. So just make sure that if you have everything in there. So everything that you have, if you have everything CBCA and you put on there that you want TSU, we're going to pull all that information straight out and get you straight admitted to the university just that easy. And even if you don't um, mention that you want to um, attend TSU in your choices, then um, we are still working to try to make sure we reach those students that don't. And you can always, uh, like we stated earlier on the call, if you decide that you want TSU to get your information, then shoot us an email. I check those emails, uh, send us an email, or, you know, you guys are attending this event with me. So I will put my email in the chat again. I'll probably drop it three or four times. 
and you can email me directly because I do most of the work with CBCA. So uh, just send me an email directly and say, hey, I applied for CBCA. I want you guys to pull my stuff. And I will, if you send me an email and let me know that you have applied through CBCA, um, I will get all of your information and stuff. If you have all of your documents loaded, you have your transcripts, your test scores, everything is loaded, I will get your stuff full and I will get you admitted that same day. So please make sure um, you're, that you, uh, everybody take record of my email address and send me an email if you have applied to um, TSU. Our application for uh, juniors opened July 1st. So you can go ahead and apply. And as you see on the bottom of the slide, we are located, of course, on the Common Black College app. So like I said, uh, shoot me an email if you've applied and we'll get that taken care of for you. Um, make sure in your email that you do give me your full name as you typed it in CBCA so that I will be able to find you in the system. So those are our admissions requirements. I hope everybody wrote that down, took a screenshot of it. For a second here. But like I said, these are all the admission requirements. Please make sure that you write these down. Like I said, apply to the CB. If you apply to the CBCA, you got my email address there. Send me an email with your full name. I will pull your application and we will get you admitted next. If you meet the admissions requirements, if you meet the admissions requirements, I will get you accepted as soon as possible. Um, so go ahead and take that down. Um, so we're also going to take a look at tuition and fees. So I know you're going to want to know, well, how much does it cost? So this is going to be a breakdown of the um, tuition and fees for Tennessee State University. I know for this is uh, the fees uh, that were um, for fall 2019 and spring 2020, but the school did not uh, raise the prices uh, for this year. So this is going to be the same for um, upcoming year. So this is what, um, like I said, this is gonna be undergraduate maintenance fees and tuition. So just to be clear for those that don't uh, understand, there's a difference between um, fees and tuition. So if you are in state student, meaning that you are a resident of the state of Tennessee, then you do not pay tuition. Um, tuition is only for out of state students. If you are a resident of Tennessee, then what you're going to pay is your undergraduate maintenance fees. And this is going to go uh, according to your um, amount of hours that you're going to take. So to be a full time, most full time students take um, your first couple of years, take around 15 hours. So anywhere from 12 to 15 hours, uh, mostly 15. So as you can see there on the, on the screen that um, 15 hours uh, for an in-state student, that maintenance fee is going to be 3,500. So that's gonna be your maintenance fee then you have your program service fee, and then your total undergraduate in-state is going to be uh, 4092. So 4092 is what you're going to pay for classes. Now, that is not including your meal plan and your residence hall. So what you're gonna look at is this is going to be, um, so you are going to pay the 4092 plus the your housing and plus your meal plan because if you stay on campus you have to have a meal plan so this is just for the fees for the classes now if you are an out of state student then you will have to pay um tuition as well so you will have to pay the tuition along with the maintenance fee so if you take 15 hours um you will have the 4092 um fees plus the 6,600 or so um, out of state tuition, which is going to give you a total of 10,000, uh, 10,770. So that is what your, it, that is what your total tuition is going to be for you if you are out of state, student, uh, if you are an out of state student. However, we also have here in the, uh, at Tennessee State, we have what we call a 250 mile radius discount. 
So if you live within, or if your high school is located within 250 miles of the university, then you're going to receive a discount off of your out-of-state tuition. And that discount, I think, can go up to about 60%. Um, so you will almost be the same as an in-state student. So if you and if you put in to our so when you let us know where you're from and you have your address in the system and your high school, then the discount is automatically applied. It's not something that you have to actually apply for. It is a discount that is applied based on your location. So when we say 250 mile radius, what is that? So Atlanta, if I got any of my ATL folks on here, Atlanta is considered within our 250 mile radius. So if you are a resident of Atlanta, you attend high school in Atlanta, uh, you will be able to take advantage of that. Um, Louisville, Kentucky, Huntsville, Alabama, I think Birmingham is within that. Um, most of the state of Alabama, I think, is pretty uh, much in that. I know down to Birmingham, Huntsville, um, up into Kentucky, um, right outside of Memphis going into Mississippi. Um, I think we also make exceptions for other areas because we have so many students that come from certain areas up on into St. Louis and those types of areas, I'm not sure. But if you are unsure, I always get the question of, well, my school is 255 miles away or my school is 270 miles away. Will I still be able to qualify? Well, uh, they do make some exceptions. Um, that will be um, a conversation that you will have with the Office of Financial Aid. So if you want to know if your school um, falls within that 250 mile radius to be able to receive that discount off of your out-of-state tuition um, if you're unsure then go ahead and reach out to the financial aid department and they will let you know if your school qualifies for that um, also at the bottom here you'll see we have some installment plan charges and things like that um, we do offer installment plans for the fall and the spring. So if you are not receiving enough funds to cover all of your fees and you want to be set up on a, on a payment plan, then what you would do is you would pay half of your tuition up front and then the rest of the balance will be placed on a payment plan and you will pay that monthly for the rest of the semester. So that is an option that you are given as well. Um, also here, you'll see where it says books estimated for 300, 900, but we also have something that we offer at the school called a book bundle where some of your classes will qualify for the book bundle. So if your class is qualified for the book bundle, then that means the cost of those particular books for those classes will be included into your tuition. Okay, so I got a question. How much is room and board? I'm about to get to that and meal plans. I am about to talk about that right now. So take a screenshot of this. If not, um, all of this information, like I said, is located on our website, but this is a breakdown of the fees for the fall. Also, like I said, remember 250 mile radius, you're gonna get that discount. We also have detail uh, plan of the 250 mile radius located um, on the website as well. So here is going to be a breakdown of our housing fees for um, the school year. So this is gonna be broken down by dorms uh, because uh, the different residence halls do have different prices. I know you'll see here where it says triple occupancy, but I don't even really think we really do triple occupancy anymore. Um, I don't recall anybody having to stay three to a room. I stay three to a room. Like I said, that was 20 years ago. So I don't think they're really doing that. Um, I don't think they're doing that anymore. Uh, but you have to contact housing for that. For the most part, it's going to be either um, a single or a double occupancy. And because the space is mostly probably going to be double occupancy. Um, so this is going to be a breakdown of the fees for those different dorms. So you have Boyd Hall, which is our upperclassmen men's dorm. Um, 
that is going to, those are going to be the prices for that. So if you're staying two to a room um, in Boyd Hall, it's going to be $19.79 for Boyd, like I said, upperclassmen boys dorm. Um, Epps Hall is going to be our upperclassmen girls dorm. So also, as you can see, the same price uh, for most of these dorms, uh, the double occupancy is going to be, uh, the prices are for our first four dorms are going to be the same because they are the same style of dorm room. So you have Epps Hall, um, Watson Hall is the freshman boys dorm that I showed you guys. That is going to be the prices for Watson Hall. Wilson Hall is the freshman girls dorm that I showed you. Um, those are going to be the prices for Wilson. Rudolph Hall uh, is the upperclassmen girls dorm. Um, as you can see, that price is going to be a little higher um because of the amenities in that dorm so uh you see there is i think that's and i don't think they do three to a room over there so it's really going to be just for the double occupancy and then hail hall that is going to be um as i stated that is the honors college dorm that dorm is co-ed so men and women can apply for that dorm and you also have to apply for the honors college remember that and then you have the four new residence complex so four complex is going to be the campus apartments and how those campus apartments look is you're going to have an apartment that's going to have i think three to four bedrooms uh private bedrooms inside each apartment so you inside the apartment you're going to share a common area and a kitchen and then if you have four rooms it'll be two bathrooms so it'll be only two students sharing one bathroom and then everyone has their own private room with their own lock to their own private room and so that is going to be 3272 to stay a semester to stay in uh the campus apartments and that is for upperclassmen only um freshmen are not allowed to stay in the campus apartments so I'll give you just a second. If you want to write any of this down, take a screenshot. Um, these are going to be the breakdown of the housing fees for TSU. So that is that. So now we're gonna move on to meal plans. So this is what the meal plans are going to look like um, for TSU. Uh, residents of on-campus apartments are required to at least participate in the zero uh, meal plan plus 300 dining dollars. Uh, all other residents are required to participate in the unlimited plus 300 dining um, dollars plan if they're uh, less than 30 credit hours earned or a minimum of 150 meals plus 300 dining dollar meal plan if you have 30 or more uh, credit R's or R if you're an RA. Um, so this is gonna be a breakdown of the meal plan. So as you can see here, our biggest meal plan is gonna be seven day with a $300 declining balance. That means seven days, meaning that you have the option to eat in our dining facilities uh, seven days a week. Um, that's every day. Um, that's going to be three meals a day. We do have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, we have a main cafeteria, which is something I didn't touch on. Um, we do have a main cafeteria, which is going to be located in our student center. That's where it's going to be your, your salad bar, your hot bar, where you're going to get, um, you know, your full um, meal. Um, also, they have um, fruit down there, ice cream. They have something kind of like a hibachi bowl type uh, setup down there. It's going to be like a, a buffet. So you'll get to, when you go in there, it's not like you have to just pick one thing and sit down. You can, um, while you're in there at that time, you can go back and forth as you you know, if you're hungry, you can go up there two or three times. So uh, that's that setup. Also, what we have located in our um, student center is our um, other dining facility where you will be allowed to use your meal plan is going to be, um, we have, we do have a Chick-fil-A. We have um, Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hut, and Starbucks that is located inside this dining facility. Um, you are allowed to use your meal plan at at that um, in that facility. 
So if you want to eat Chick-fil-A every day for lunch, which I hate to admit it, I do sometimes. <laughs> uh, if you do want to uh, eat Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hut, uh, you do not have to eat in the cafeteria. You can't eat up there. Um, and so moving on, we have the five day um, and then so on and so on. So these are going to be our uh, meal plans. And if you do stay on campus, you are required, um, as you can see in the print at the bottom, you are uh, required to have a meal plan. So these are the prices for our meal plans. All right, so, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. I do see one question. Um, somebody stated, do we, do TSU offer masks communications. Yes, TSU does offer uh, mass communications. If you go onto our website, because I did touch on that a little earlier, um, if you go onto our website, you will be able to see uh, the different concentrations that fall under mass communications. I know we have theater as one of the concentrations under mass communications, and I think it's some, other, it's, it's some others. So just go to our website, and you'll be able to see um, the different concentrations that we have for mass communications. Um, so I forgot that I do have a 250 mile radius rate <laughs> uh, slide on here. So um, this is going to be, yes, uh, per semester for the meal plan. Yes, that is per semester for the meal plans. All right, so this is a better breakdown of our 250-mile radius tuition rate. So out-of-state students, um, if you are in a county within 250-mile radius of Nashville, you are uh, eligible for this. So this is what I was talking about, as you can see. Um, so let's look here for 15 hours, where it says, uh, if you if your tuition, let's say you have 15 hours, so 15 hours, your tuition is normally going to be the 6678. But if you stay within 250 miles, that's going to drop from two from 6678 to 2956. So that's basically a cutting a little over cut in half. Um, so that's going to drop your total from over ten thousand dollars to seventy forty eight. So that, like I said, if you are in Atlanta, you know Birmingham, any of our cities close, you are going to be able to take advantage of this. And if you want to know if your city, uh, if you, if you have eligibility, then you would just have to reach out um, to the bursars or the financial aid office, and they will let you know. Um, so it says eligibility, classify as an out-of-state student for fee pay payment purposes. So yes, you do have to be classified as an out-of-state student. Um, you do have to be degree seeking. You have to be enrolled in 15 or more undergraduate credit hours or nine or more graduate credit hours uh, in order to take advantage of this. And graduated from an eligible high school located in a county within 250 mile radius of Nashville. So like I said, it, you might not think it's 250 miles, you may think it's a little over, but sometimes they make exceptions. You would just have to reach out to see if um, your school is on that exception list because they do have an exception list for that 250 mile radius. Now I'll let you know right now, if you're looking at this from California, that ain't on the exception list. <laughs> but if you are maybe like in the Midwest um, and um, or, you know, more so like the Midwest going towards the East, uh, if you are wondering if you qualify, then please check out our website uh, to or contact them to see if you are, are eligible. So if you are out of state student, you want to take a picture of this, go ahead and snap a photo of this. Like I said, all of this information is located on the website as well. So that is our 250 mile radius. Um, as far as financial aid goes, this is, uh, I, have, I have placed here the contact information, the phone number and email address for financial aid. These are all the things that we offer through financial aid. Um, hold on, I'm getting some 
questions, does TSU offer major speech therapy or audiology? I know we do for speech therapy. Uh, you would need to go to the website and look at, because uh, I did show that a little earlier. Uh, what you would do is go to our website and go to uh, programs, degrees and programs to see if we have um, audiology. I do believe, I think I've seen that. So go there to uh, look at that. Or after I finish, I can scroll back to those slides and show you our different majors. And we can look that up. If you give me just a moment, I can go back to that. Um, okay, I, I see our vocal scholarships offered as well as RTC. If you're talking about vocal scholarships as far as um, in music, uh, we do, the music department does offer many scholarships as far as maybe one in particular uh, in vocal, you would have to actually reach out to the music department to find out which uh, vocal, if they offer any vocal scholarships. If you go to tnstate.edu um, and go to the music department then, and reach out to them, they are working this summer. Let uh, ask them what scholarships they offer as far as in music and if they have those vocal scholarships available. Um, as far as ROTC, there are scholarships offered in ROTC. Like I stated, we only have the um, Air Force, but if you also go to our website, to our ROTC page and reach out to our ROTC department, they will let you know what scholarships are available in ROTC, but we do have scholarships available. Um, I see, what about Alabama? So there are portions of Alabama that are located within 250 miles. I know Huntsville, I know Birmingham. So uh, if you are located in somewhere between there, uh, you I know that you will be eligible for the 250 mile radius. Uh, just look up and see how many miles, wherever you're located, um, see how far you are, your county is away from Nashville and that will let you know. If it does say that your county is over 250 miles, then you will have to reach out to that department. I mean, reach out to financial aid to find out if your school qualifies, if it's on the exception list. Um, so financial aid, like I said, this is the phone number and web address. If you want to reach out to them personally, these are the different things that we offer through financial aid. We have Pell Grants, direct loans, uh, other grants, work study. So you and you are allowed to take advantage of work study as a freshman. Um, we do have federal Perkins loans, uh, TSU performance scholarships, so forth. Um, they asked me about vocal scholarships that could fall under the, those performance scholarships, uh, band, athletics, et cetera. Uh, like I stated, contact the source department, so you would contact music for that. Um, TSU departmental scholarships, again, engineering, business, any of that, you will contact those departments to find out their specific scholarships. Um, we do have TSU special scholarships, such as TSU uh, presidential and foundation scholarships, any type of TSU academic scholarship or anything, you can contact the Office of Admissions at 615-963-5101. And that's uh, also, we do have a scholarship portal located on the website. Uh, our scholarship uh, portal for applicants opens up in October. So if you are interested in applying for scholarships, uh, you that portal opens up in October. However, if you do qualify for scholarships and we see in our system, once you are admitted, um, if you do qualify for scholarships, then those, you will automatically receive correspondence that lets you know that you do fall in the range of qualifying for a scholarships. Um, third party grant scholarships, uh, if you are interested in any third party grant scholarships, please contact that third party. Now, back to scholarships. Like I said, everybody always wants to know, you know, because we want to get this paid for. We're not trying to graduate. We know huge balance. <laughs> so, yes, definitely scholarships. So, these are a lot of the different opportunities available for scholarships uh, for you to be able to pay for school. So, um, to be considered um, for uh, scholarships at TSU, 
for our academic scholarships, you have to be an in-state student, must have a minimum of a 2.9 GPA and a 19 on the ACT and a 900 on the SAT. There are a limited number of academic scholarships for out-of-state students, uh, but if there are uh, scholarships available, then out-of-state students uh, must meet the same criteria. So if you are a high performing student, if you do graduate top of your class and have amazing test scores and GPA, then uh, TSU will definitely uh, want to have you here at our university and reward you with uh, for that with the opportunity to obtain scholarships. So we do have that available. Um, like I stated earlier, we do have payment plans that are available in the fall and the spring. They're not available in the summer. And we also have fee waivers for state of Tennessee employees. So if you live in the state of Tennessee and you are a state of Tennessee employee, then there are fee waivers available for you. You would just have to reach out, um, fill out those fee waiver forms, uh, talk to your employer, um, and you can receive uh, fee waivers for uh, your tuition if you are, well, for your fees if you are in state and work for the state of Tennessee. Um, also, other uh, scholarships that we accept, we do um, accept UNCF scholarships, so you can go to their website. The Thurgood Marshall College Fund, uh, we do accept those. Also, a couple of other options for scholarships are going to be Scholarship America and FastWeb. You can go there. There are going to be scholarship opportunities available there. And the, TH, the Tennessee State University Nashville alum, I mean, National Alumni Association. So I always try to tell students when I am uh, talking to students in different areas, if you are located in a city where there is a chapter of the TSU Alumni Association, please try to find that chapter and inquire about their scholarships. I know many scholar, many uh, chapters, because I am also a member of the Alumni Association, and there are many chapters in the, the TSU Alumni Association that offer scholarships, if not all of them. Um, so definitely I know for Nashville, if you are a local watching this and you are considering attending TSU next fall, please reach out to the Nashville chapter. The Nashville chapter has scholarships that they have to beg to give away. They have to beg students to apply. I'm saying it's free money that the alumni want to give you. So if you live in Nashville, please reach out to the Nashville chapter. All the alumni chapter information is located on our website. Um, also the website for the Alumni Association, I will put in the chat so you can go on there and find your respective uh, chapters. I'm gonna put that now. Um, I just dropped that in the chat. So that's tsunaa.org. Uh, you can find the chapter. So we have Chicago has a chapter, St. Louis, DC, um, Huntsville. If you're in Huntsville, Alabama, they give away scholarships. Um, East Tennessee. Uh, these are just some of the chapters I know off top. Atlanta, definitely Atlanta. Um, these are some of the chapters that I know that give away scholarships to first time freshmen. So please make sure you're looking to see what scholarships are available. Um, through the Alumni Association so that you can take advantage of that and get you a little extra money to come into school. Um, so that's going to be all of the scholarship opportunities that are available. So um, let's see if we have any questions. Uh, so um, we're going to, we always want you to stay in touch with us, make sure that you're reaching out to us. Let me move this because I don't know if you can see. Um, our team is always so very willing uh, to, we're here to assist you in any questions that you may have in this process. Um, we have a general admissions uh, email address. Our general admissions email address is going to be admissions at tnstate.edu. So if you have any general admissions questions, you can reach out to us through there. Um, we do have an Instagram. We also have a Twitter too. I didn't put it on there, but um, all of our social media pages are going to be the same. So we have uh, IG, which is going to be TSU admissions. And then our Facebook page, which is where you're watching me from right now, is going to also be Tennessee State University um, admissions. And so we are also here through uh, that to um, 
answer any questions that you may have as well, or for you to be able to kind of keep up with the things that are going on on campus. Um, this is going to be the information to reach out to me. That is my beautiful face right there. <laughs> um, this is going to be all of my contact information. I am a recruiter um, in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. I mainly focus on the Middle Tennessee region. However, due to this event, uh, anybody, I don't care where you're located in the country, if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me with your questions, um, anything. So this is going to be the address to the school. That is the address to the university. Um, the first number that says office, that's going to be my office number. But of course, we are working at home right now because of the pandemic. So my remote number is going to be that second number located there, uh, 447-8069. Uh, that number does reach directly to me. Um, and so that is going to be a way that you can get in touch with me. That's also the fax number in case you have to fax any um, documents into the Office of Admissions. That is going to be our fax number. Also, I have a calendar that you can make personal appointments with me. So let's say, okay, I just sat here and gave you guys two hours of information, but you want to go a little bit more in depth. You want to talk to me about your personal situation. Uh, you want to ask some more in-depth questions. Mama, daddy, grandmama want to get on, want to ask some questions, whoever. Um, so my Calendly is going to be my calendar where you can set an appointment with me. So calendly.com uh, forward slash uh, Dr. Portia Johnson. That is going to be my um, calendar to set an appointment. So you can set an appointment with me. Um, it's going to ask you to let me know the details. So let's say you want a Zoom. You want to do a Zoom call, just like kind of what we're doing right now. Um, you can specify that in the comments. And I will, when you make your appointment, and then I will set up a Zoom for us and your family or whoever. Uh, if you just want me to call you on the phone and talk for a few minutes through the application process, uh, we can do that as well. If you want me to, if you've already applied and you want me to check on your information, I can do that. If you, if you just want to talk and say, hey, I need you to pull my stuff and get me accepted, <laughs> go ahead and set an appointment with me. I'd be more than glad to discuss whatever it is you would like to discuss um, through that link. So that is my calendar to set an appointment with me. Also located there at the bottom is my my uh, work email address. So pjohnso4 at tnstate.edu. That is my email address. Uh, make sure you write that down. I know I've dropped it in the chat a couple of times, but that is how you can get in touch with me through email if you have any additional questions that you might want me to answer. Also, um, like I said, if you want me to pull up your application, access your application, if you've already applied, then you can shoot me an email. If you want to discuss it, then you can set an appointment. Um, I have a comment that says, when does the application open up? The application opened up July 1st. So the application should already be open. Um, if you are having trouble and you're not able to access the application, then once again, send me a email and I will look into that for you. Um, so the application should already be open. Uh, what is the relationship with the neighboring universities? We have a great relationship with our neighboring universities, um, more so our other HBCUs. As I stated earlier, um, Fisk and Meharry, both HBCUs are located down the street um literally almost walking distance um we do have an amazing um relationship with Meharry uh like I stated earlier we have a program with them for our med students so if you are accepted into that program then you can go ahead and start taking med school classes while you're an undergrad um also with Fisk we have um you know, it's, it's a great relationship between our students uh, because the schools are so close. We also have something very fun every year that we do called uh, the Battle of Jefferson Street because uh, both of our schools are located right off of Jefferson, historic uh, Jefferson Street. Um, so we do have this big, huge basketball game that we play every year at the Gentry Center um, against Fisk that our students look forward to. That is um, a, a big event that we do with Fisk. Um, also, we have another HBCU located in Nashville called American Baptist College. Um, American Baptist College, uh, 
is going to be um, where, you know, if you're studying to become, to get into the ministry or things like that. Um, they, I think they are starting to now offer some liberal uh, arts degrees, but we do have an amazing relationship with them as well, because a lot of our students who may come here for undergrad will go there to pursue their uh, degrees if they're trying to get into ministry. Um, so that is going to be our relationship with those schools. Um, Vanderbilt University, if you're not familiar with Vanderbilt University, that is also a large school here in Nashville. We do have a partnership with them as far as um, for our ROTC. So if we do have students that are interested in getting into Army ROTC, then we do have a relationship with Vanderbilt um, for that. So those are all the universities that are the closest to the school and the relationships we have uh, with those universities. So I hope that answers your question. Um, I did have a question of, do we have a major in the speech therapy ideology? So let's go back here um, and see on our list. I think it's under speech communications. Okay, so that is our mass communications. Um, and for the person, for the uh, person that asked about uh, vocal scholarships, as you can see, we do have vocal music as a concentration. So I'm pretty sure we do have scholarships available. And I think for under the audiology is going to be one of those. Yeah, we would have to look that up. I do believe we have that. I would just have to look at our more in-depth list. Um, if not, you can look into our, our website and there should be a more updated list there. All right, do we have any more questions? I'm just checking out the chat, seeing if we have any more questions. Uh, like I said, those are my, that's my contact information. I'm going to stay on a few more minutes. Uh, I will go back to our admission requirements for anybody that's just now jumping on. Um, these are our admission requirements. We do require 2.5 GPA um, for basic admission, 3.2 weighted GPA, you get guaranteed admission. Um, 19 on the ACT, 900 on SAT, 16 uh, for general admission. If you are not admitted to the university, then you can file an appeal. We do um, accept about 10% of our appeals. So that is something that you want to do early if you want to appeal. Um, we do have, if you are still undecided about this fall where you're going, um, you would need to hurry up and get on it, but we can still get you in there. Uh, we are waiving test scores for this fall. So if this fall is something that you're interested in, test scores are being waived. Um, application, application fee, transcripts, and test scores to be admitted. Like I said, if you apply to the Common Black College application and you are on this call and you have already applied, which I'm hoping that most of you have, if not, do it today. Uh, if you have applied through the Common Black College application and you have your transcripts and your test scores uploaded and you meet our uh, general admission requirements for the university, then send us an e send me an email. I'll put my information back up, but send me uh, personally an email letting me know that you have applied through CBCA and I will go ahead and get your stuff pulled and I will get you, go ahead and get you accepted into the university if you meet all the requirements. Will the campus be open this fall for tours? We did have a tentative um, tour outline um, outlined for the fall for campus tours. I'm uh, being the current state of the university because we did kind of uh, flesh that out earlier before um, our 
pandemic situation got worse. So I'm not quite sure of what our standing um, decision is going to be just yet. As far as campus tours, I know we had decided that we were going to reduce the size of tours and, you know, require masks and all that. But at this point, I'm not sure for the safety of the students that are already on campus. So that is something we're going to have to revisit. Um, and then we'll be able to put that information out soon. But as of this moment right now, I'm not sure what our campus tour situation is going to look like right now. Um, but if you do want to view a virtual tour of our campus, we do have a virtual tour located on our website, tnstate.edu. So if you go onto the website um, and look at type in virtual tour into the search, then it'll pull up our virtual tour of the campus um, until we otherwise know. But once we find out our tour information, we will place it on the website. Um, do we have a criminal justice program? Yes, we do have a criminal justice program. It's a really good program um, at TSU. And so, yes, we do have criminal justice. Um, if you are interested in the criminal justice program and want to know what scholarships and stuff they have available, then just go to the criminal justice on our website and get their contact information and they'll be able to uh, let you know what um, scholarships they have available for their different programs. All right, so not seeing any more questions right now. Um, but like I said, these are our general admission requirements. Um, and I'll put my contact information back up. Uh, this is my contact information. Like I said, if you came in late um, and missed our presentation and we uh, then, and you have any uh, questions, then you can reach out to me personally and I will answer those questions for you. Um, do you have pre-med programs that partner with high tier universities? Um, the only program that we have uh, that we partner with in pre-med is going to be Meharry Medical College. So right now, that is the partnership that we have. Um, as we know, you know, uh, Meharry Medical College is the premier HBCU medical, is a premier HBCU medical college. Uh, we graduate more uh, dentists than HBCU. So, um, you know, uh, that is a very highly sought out medical school, school for our students. The majority of our pre-med students uh, do go on to um, transition um, to Meharry Medical College. That is usually um, where the majority of them go. So if you um, are interested in attending Meharry, we do have a bridge program that students can apply for to help them transition to Meharry Medical College. Um, I'm showing, you see we have an ROTC program. Yes, we do have ROTC, um, Air Force ROTC. And we, uh, if you are interested in Army ROTC, then you, we, we are partnered through Vanderbilt University for that. Um, do we have scholarships in that program? Uh, if you're talking about biology, there are scholarships available. You would have to contact the biology department. If you are talking about ROTC, yes, they have scholarships available as well. Um, so you would have to reach out to the um, ROTC program or the biology program. Any, pro any program scholarships are going to be uh are going to be offered through that school. Um, I work with many students who are interested in medical school. Okay. Um, Ms. Rodriguez, if you want to send me an email with your information, so your email, so that I will have your contact information. If you want to shoot me an email, you see my email address there. If you want to send me an email, I will work on uh, getting all of that information over to you. I will get the information um, about our programs in biology for med school. Also, if you have students that are interested in pre-vet, I would 
get that information to you and also the information i have a video uh for our uh with our department of rotc so if you email me i will get that information to you i will send you that video for rotc um also Okay, excuse me, Dr. Rodriguez. I don't know. See, I just see your name. I I I, I put some respect on it, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, I will if you send me an email, I will get that for you. And yes, I do believe I am free September 9th, and I would love to be a part of your fair. So please shoot me an email and we can discuss the logistics of that for your virtual fair and also get you that information that you need. I will get all that to you. So um, anybody else, if we have any questions, just drop your questions in the chat. Um, also, if you have applied through the Common Black College app and you have all of your information uploaded to the system and you would like to be um, admitted to the university and you meet all of the qualifications, we will get that taken care of for you. Please send me an email and I will have, I will expedite that for you. It's not too late for fall 2020 if you are interested. Um, if you are, you, you know, still trying to make decisions, uh, please email uh, if you are, you know, uh, still interested in applying for the fall, um, but you need to get that ASAP because we have mandatory orientation for our first time freshmen and we have one more orientation session left um, in August. So if you are on this call and you're interested in the fall and you have not been accepted to TSU and you have applied through the Common Black College app, please send me an email. I will get your information pulled and we will rush trying to get your, uh, so I can let you know what you need to get in so you can still get in this fall. I am a rising senior class of 2021. No, it is not too early to seek information, um, admission information. Our application opened up July 1st. So if you are a rising senior and would like to apply, our application for you all uh, should be available. It was supposed to be available July 1st. Um, I haven't had anybody reach out to me to say that they're having any problems with it. But if you um, are wanting to apply, and you apply through, well, if you apply through CBCA, then you wouldn't fill out the application on our website. So if you apply through CBCA and you wanna be uh, considered for next fall, uh, once again, send me an email and I will pull your information and see if we can go ahead and um, put you in our system at TSU. So just shoot me an email. Uh, what about transfer students? Um, yeah, we in my office, we also work with transfer students. Um, the transfer student admission is going to be a little different. I actually don't recruit uh, transfer. I have I don't really work personally with them. Um, so that's why I didn't have any information here. But I do um, take information for transfer students. Um, so with the transfer students, they I think that GPA has to be a 2.0 if they are uh, less than 30 hours transfer students from their previous institution. Um, we only accept up to about 90 transfer hours. Um, and if you're going to be a transfer student, you're going to have to um, submit your uh, unofficial high school transcripts. You will have to submit um, official transcripts from all of your colleges that you have previously attended. Um, I don't believe we need test scores for that. Um, just unofficial transcripts and unofficial high school transcripts, official college transcripts. And um, of course, application, application fee. And then we can uh, evaluate you for admission as a transfer student. Also, we do accept dual enrollment. We do accept dual enrollment credits. If you are a high school student um, and you have uh, obtained dual enrollment credits, we do accept those. So we will accept your college credits if you already have obtained those. We encourage that. Go ahead and get that knocked out. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you have those credits, we will take them. Um, so we also do accept those as well. Um, anything else? Yeah, so if you are, like I said, CBCA, um, if you've applied and you're on this call, please let me know and we will look at it. Um, if you are considering, if you are still trying to get in for this fall, please make sure that you reach out to me so that I can make sure that we go ahead and get you processed as soon as possible so that you can um, get your housing if needed. Also for this fall, for the pandemic, I think if you decide to stay at home and do our online classes, then we are giving um, this fall. I don't know uh, because we don't know what the scope of the country is gonna look like next fall, but this fall, if you are going to stay at home and attend classes online, then they are going to give out a tuition discount for those students that choose to stay home uh, for the um, and take advantage of those online classes. And um, I think that's going to be about a 15% tuition discount for those students that choose to stay home this fall. Um, so that's also an option for our students that are interested in still attending this fall. But if we have any more questions, please drop them in the chat. I am here for a few more minutes. Um, this, like I said, this is my information. If you missed anything um, on this presentation, just go ahead and send me an email or if anything you would like for me to check on for you, look up, find out about um, anything at all, just send me an email if you would like to discuss things further. Um, please send me a calendar invite and I will be more than happy to um, set up an appointment with you and meet with you personally. There's all of our information. Um, they're located right there. I hope you guys got everything you needed out of this today. I love talking about TSU. Uh, like I stated earlier, I am an alumni of Tennessee State University. I graduated. I know I didn't talk about that, uh, but I graduated with my bachelor's degree in business administration and management. Um, I also got my master's in business administration from TSU, and I am currently a doctoral candidate um, where I'll be here very, very soon receiving my doctorate in educational leadership, higher ed administration, all here at TSU. So that just lets you know, I don't just work at TSU. I am also a lifelong student. I am on my third TSU degree. So that just goes to show you that I have entrusted TSU with my education. Clearly I've gotten some out of it. Else I would not have stayed for three degrees. Um, so I'm very proud of the education that I have received here at TSU and glad uh, to answer any questions you may have. Also, like I stated, I am a adjunct professor in the College of Business. So if you are interested in becoming a business student and you have any questions about the College of Business, um, I can answer that. Um, also, I mean, if you're interested in any of the other colleges, I know people in those departments that have a great wealth of information that love would love to speak to you. So if you would like to talk to anybody, uh, just let me know and we will get you connected to the people that you need to speak with if it is not me. Um, so like I said, any information, uh, that's my contact. Also, I'll go back to this screen again. I'm just gonna keep going back and forth through these two screens. Uh, for anybody, I noticed that, you know, people are jumping on and off. So for anybody that is just now joining us, if you have um, any admissions uh, questions, that is that. I also, uh, outside of my contact information, uh, you can also reach us at Tennessee State University right here on this page. Please make sure if you're here on our Facebook page, watching this live, make sure that you are joining our Facebook page, like our page so that you can be up to date on any um, updates, any type, anytime we have any type of um, things that change or if we have any promotions at the school as far as um, 
admissions requirements or anything like that, any type of virtual events, you know, because of the current state of everything, they won't be actually physical events. So if we have any virtual events that will be held at the school, they will be posted on the Facebook page. So please make sure if you are interested in TSU to like our admissions page so that you can stay up to date um, with all of the events that are going on at TSU and that are happening um, in our admissions department. So please make sure you like the page. Um, you can also send us messages through Facebook page, uh, but these are our basic admissions requirements. We will keep you guys updated on if we are going to offer admissions through the, um, if we're gonna offer admissions through, I mean, um, Lord, I've been talking so long, I can't remember what I'm trying to say. <laughs> we're gonna keep you up to date if we're gonna be waiving test scores for the fall of 2021. That's what I wanna say. We'll let you guys know if that's going to change. And like I said, just any other questions you may have, let us know. Um, I am here. Uh, you know, TSU, we are a family. And people always ask me, why are you staying at TSU? You went there so long and now you want to work there. It's, it, we're, we're a family. We're a family. And I want you to feel like, I want you to feel safe and comfortable um, coming to TSU and realizing that you have somebody that's on your side. Uh, I am here to help you. If mama, if you're if you're nervous about sending the baby all the way to Tennessee, we're gonna go back to this screen. Here's my contact information. Moms, dads, if you wanna talk about it because you're nervous about baby going so far away from home, we can talk about it. Set up an appointment. I would be more than happy to talk to you about anything you wanna know about the school, the area, um, the different things that we got going on campus, security-wise, you know, we we a gated university, okay? We gated all the way around and we have security. We don't play, you know, we are, we were voted one of the safest uh, universities in the country so we do take that very seriously so if you want if you have any questions about any of that just please let me know so once again that is my contact information um i am showing that i don't have any more questions in the chat so if i don't have any more questions um i'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump out well hold on i got one question how is homecoming and party life on campus? Okay, so <laughs> I always try to dodge the party life question because you know that's not what we coming for. We're coming to learn something. But I have to be honest. Um, homecoming is amazing. I have been to a million HBCU homecomings uh here in the country, and I will tell you, and I'm not. I might be a little biased, I don't know, but I I, I'm, I consider myself to be pretty honest. Um, homecoming is one of the best uh, experiences you're going to have as a student here at TSU. If you have not experienced a TSU homecoming, it's just amazing. You have to think about, we're in a big city here, okay? Nashville is a pretty big city. It wasn't as popping as it you know, when I was in undergrad is now, so you kids kind of have an advantage. But with homecoming, I mean, it's so engaged. Our alumni, man, our alumni uh, work really hard to make sure that the experience is amazing on all levels, not just for the undergrads, but for the parents, for the alumni. You know, we have our homecoming is going to be a full week of stuff. So you're going to have comedy shows. You're going to have, I know last year at the comedy shows, we had DC Young Fly and The Baby. So even though it was a comedy show, we still have uh, performers. Um, so you, we're going to have comedy shows. You're going to have some like, usually it's some type of battle between the dorms. You're going to have the coronation of Miss Tennessee State University that's going to take place during that week. Um, Thursday, Thursday is when it really kicks off because every year um, on that Thursday, we have our big con our homecoming concert. And um, like I said, I know a couple of years, I mean, we have big names. It's not like little names, you know, it's it's big names. We had, I know the last time I went to homecoming concert, we had Future. Um, so last year they they decided to do several artists. Um, I don't really know, you know, I'm a little old, so I don't know all these people, but uh it was like a little baby, 
a G Herbo, Gunna. Uh, it was about five or six of them. I, I'm sorry, I can't name all of them. But it was people that you guys like. So, um, you know, and our concert always sells out. It's like thousands of people in the Gentry Center for that concert. Um, and so it's always a good time. Um, and then Friday is when our homecoming um, festivities start. We have our huge pep rally. So we have a pep rally in the hole. Because you got to think, we got two football fields for TSU because we have the hole, which is our football that's on campus. And then we also play our homecoming game at the Tennessee Titans NFL Stadium. So you're, you're talking about homecoming stretches for TSU from campus all the way past Fisk, uh, Meharry goes all the way down to the Titan Stadium, which, which is like a long street and it's gonna take you from TSU to Fisk. And you got people set up all down the street. They selling fish sandwiches, they selling <laughs> everything, pocketbooks, everything. Um, so you have all of that. And um, we have our big, amazing pep rally that we do on Friday. You know, the national chapter does their fish fry. Um, you have a ton of day parties. Um, and then you have the, the probably the biggest tailgate you'll ever go to in your life um, down at Nissan Stadium at the Titan Stadium is where the homecoming um, tailgate takes place on homecoming day. It's amazing. I've went to home. I've went to tailgate early in the morning and not left till like 10, 11 o'clock at night. So it's like, that's how big and amazing the, the tailgate is. Uh, Cause you gotta think we're tailgating at an NFL stadium. So it's just something we look so forward to. Um, lots of parties as far as TSU on campus. Um, they do like to have a lot of events for you guys to keep you guys engaged. Um, like I said earlier, we have Courtyard Wednesday, which is going to be um, every Wednesday where all the students are going to come to the courtyard. That's where you're going to see the Greeks strolling and all the different organizations are going to be out there. Um, there's usually a DJ out there. So that's going to be every Wednesday. As far as like party life, I ain't going to lie to you. Like I said, I'm old. So I don't know exactly um, how the party situation is, but because we're here to learn. Uh, but I do know that our students, uh, they do have a good time. They work hard and they do play hard as well. But we're going to first say they work hard because y'all mama and stuff on here. So I ain't going to tell y'all that y'all going to be here kicking it. <laughs> but yeah, they do. They do have our students. I never hear our students complain about not having a good time. Um, I also see what is the student to teacher, teacher ratio. That's gonna be 16 to one. So even though we are a larger HBCU, our ratio is generally 16 to one because we do want our students to have a more personal experience with their professors. So we're, we're, we encourage uh, smaller class sizes so that you can develop relationships with your students. Now, all classes won't be that small. Uh, when you're a freshman, some of your general education classes will be a little larger, um, like maybe your intros to biology and stuff like that will be um, bigger, but we do not go into triple digits. So even if you have say 60 students in your um, intro class, um, we will never have 100, 200. It'll never go into triple digits four classes. I know for the class that I teach, my class is required by all business majors. So my class is a little larger at 30. So even my class that is required by all business majors um, only goes up to about 30, 32 students um, for that class so that I can have a better relationship with my students. So we do not believe in big, huge, large class sizes for um, the classes. Um, so I hope that answers your question. All right, so I'm not seeing any more questions in the comments. So uh, please, if you got any questions, we got about five more minutes, uh, send me your questions. I'll be more than happy to answer those. If I don't see any questions, I will hop off. But uh, once again, this is my contact information. If you have uh, recorded my contact information, we're just going to go back to this other slide for admission requirements. 
if you uh, know that you have these, that you meet these admission requirements and you are a, uh, if you have applied through the Common Black College app, please send me an email and on Monday, I will say Monday because I'm probably going to be um, overwhelmed today, uh, but at least by Monday, uh, I will try to get back with you. So if you do not get a response from me today, don't worry, I will uh, get back to your emails by Monday. Um, so please make sure that you send me an email letting me know that you have applied, um, that you meet the requirements, and I will pull your information for you. So again, 2.5 GPA, 3.2 gets you guaranteed admission. That means that we do not look at your test scores. And that's weighted GPA. And so as some of you know, your weighted GPA is going to be higher than your unweighted GPA. So that's a good thing. Um, so 3.2 weighted GPA, um, 19 ACT 900 SAT, that's for to be considered for scholarships. Um, but just for general admission to the university, it's going to be 16 ACT 760 SAT. Um, we do accept about 10% of appeals. So if you do get denied early, appeal early. If you know TSU is where you wanna be, you gotta get an appeal early because at some point we will stop accepting appeals. Um, the appeal process will be located on our website. Um, if you are still considering applying for this fall, we are waiving test scores for fall 2020. We have not been updated about what that will look like for 2021, but as soon as we're updated, we will let you all know. Like I said, uh, make sure you like the Tennessee State University admissions page so you can stay up to date with alerts of, of things that change. Um, also, you have to have one whole unit of US history um, and application fees, your application fee, your application fee that is applied through the Common Black College app will be applied for the university. So if you get a free, if you get a $20 application fee for CBCA, that's going to be your application fee for TSU. Um, we're going to take that application fee. What you are going to take your application out of CBCA. We're going to take those transcripts and we're going to take those test scores and we're going to go ahead and get you admitted for next fall. Um, also, but also remember that uh, you will have a hold of your account um, until graduation. So you will have to submit your final graduation transcripts um, for to be fully accepted to the university after you graduate. Um, so make sure all of your documents are located in CBCA and we will be able to get those out. Um, what does the social work major look like? Uh, our social work major is one of our top programs in the university because we do have multiple degrees in social work. I know, I think our master's degree is one of the top programs in the country. Um, we have an amazing social work program. We have a lot of students that come to TSU <clears throat> to major in social work. Um, and I, like I said, I think it, we have several um, degrees that we offer in social work, maybe even a doctorate. It, what you need to do is go to tnstate.edu and go to the search and type in social work. And then you will be able to see the brochure and all of the information for our social work program. But that is one of our more sought out programs at the university. I can say that. Um, so just make sure you go to the web page and uh, get all of the information for that. I will say that uh, I think all of our concentrations uh, and majors at the at the university do have brochures located online. So if you go to our website, anything that you, any all of this information that I presented today is all on the website. So use your start. You don't have to kind of dig around, just go to the search. Um, make sure you go to the search tool and type in whatever it is that you're looking for. And um, more than likely, it'll just uh, populate for whatever it is that you're looking for. Go to the colleges page to get information on scholarships and things like that. Also, um, there are some programs where you have to apply for individually. So for instance, nursing. If you are applying to the nursing program, this is big. Um, if you are applying to the nursing program at TSU, 
you also have to apply to the to the nursing program. So what I mean by that is you apply to the university, but there's also a separate application for the nursing program. So you'll apply for the university um, and then you'll go to the nursing uh, program's website and they have a link on there that says apply now. And then that is gonna be a separate application for you to actually apply to the nursing school. So you would actually have to do both. You would have to apply for the nursing program and then also apply for um, the university. Um, so there are some programs like that. So just make sure that you're going to your uh, schools or college webs, I mean, a uh, web page on our website to see if there are additional applications that you would have to fill out for those departments. Um, so please make sure that you're checking in on that. And just remember what, if you're applying to CBCA, whatever major that you put in CBCA is the major we're gonna put you in on your application. So if your uh, major is, if you decide to change your major um, from between now and when you're accepted, um, then you have to make sure you reach out to us and submit a change of major form because whatever you put on the application is what we're going to put in the system. And so when you are um, registered for your classes, then you're going to be registered for classes according to your major that you put on your application. So please make sure that you are um, conscious of that when you're filling out the application. So I'm going to go back to my contact information. Um, like I said, this has been an amazing event. I am so thankful for you guys joining me here today. Um, I am going to go ahead and jump off, but here once again for the final time is my contact information. Uh, the best ways to reach me is you have my remote number there. Um, uh, you can reach me by phone. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday for the summer. Um, they're going to be 7.30 to 6, uh, Monday through Thursday. Um, you can reach me by phone. The very, the quickest way to get to me is by email. Um, that's my email address. That's going to be uh, pjohnso4 at tnstate.edu. And also I uh, do take lots of appointments. So as you see there, uh, the calendly.com forward slash uh, Dr. Portia Johnson, that is going to be my calendar. Uh, you can go, you can type in that web address. It's going to take you to my calendar. You can set up either 50, 30 or hour long uh, meeting with me. Please indicate if you want it by phone or Zoom. And you can set up an appointment for me with me. All appointments are in Central Standard Time. I am in Central Standard Time Zone. So please remember that um, when setting your appointment. Um, so if you missed any part of this presentation today and you have any questions, uh, you can set up an appointment with me and I will go over this stuff with you again, answer your questions, uh, send me an email if you have something a little more specific or give me a call. Um, and I'll be more than glad to talk with you. So please make sure you guys are writing this information down um, or taking a picture, a screenshot of it. Um, I'm just so thankful to have this time with you guys today. I hope this was helpful for you all and you got a glimpse of our amazing university. You enjoyed our campus tour that I showed at the beginning of the call, uh, at the beginning of the call. Um, and just hope that you just receive the wealth of information and that you are considering TSU. Like I said, I am a TSU product. I am on my third TSU degree and I couldn't be more happy with the education that I've received at TSU, the lifelong friends I've made and just the opportunity that Tennessee State University gave me to be employed and live in my dream, you know. My dream was to work in higher education and I did not have to go anywhere for that. I am right here at my alma mater doing what I love to do. So that just goes to show you that TSU is just not going to invest in your education, but they're gonna invest in your future and your, and your dreams as well, just like they did with me. So um, I am a testament of what TSU can do. So like I said, I mean, from any aspect, from a student aspect, alumni, professor, 
uh, admissions, whatever questions you may have. If you, I'm, a, I'm also a Nashville native. So if you have any questions about the city, anything you have any questions about, please make sure you reach out to me. Um, if you would like to talk to any current students, I have a ton of great, amazing um, students that I work with. If you actually wanna talk to some current students, if you don't wanna take it from me, uh, we, I can set that up for you to be able to talk to some of our student leaders. Just whatever you need, please reach out to me. Um, applications pulled, CBCA questions, any of them, please let me know. Um, thankful to Common Black College App for providing this opportunity for the university. Also, uh, please go and like our Facebook page so you can receive notifications. Um, and just thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, please reach out to me with any questions you may have. Um, I, I hope that this, if you weren't considering TSU before, I hope this changed your mind and um, that I was able to assist you in um, making Tennessee State University, if not the option, then definitely one of your options. Um, I look forward to seeing you future Tigers. Um, and I just look forward to any questions and anything you may offer me I know we are going to be doing this again so if you I will be back on again on the next CBCA event so just look out for TSU and I just thank you guys so much for uh, your time today and your questions and I look forward to reading everybody's email and thank you guys for tuning in to the Tennessee State University and I hope everyone has a great amazing weekend bye